I'm back. I almost did my intro. Uh, all right. Me love to Matthew. I needed to hold him and treat the night like it was the last night of the world. Tomorrow was unpredictable, but tonight was guaranteed. I guided Matthew back and sat on the bed, looking up at him before slowly easing out of my shirt, looking, locking eyes with him as I slowly began to strip for him. His breath became slightly hitched as he watched, obeying my silent demand to keep his eyes on me. As I finally became bare from the waist up, I pressed my hands onto the bed and slid back, letting my legs slide up onto the mattress and holding them out for him to do the honors. I tilted my head, letting him get the picture as I dangled my legs out for him. Oh, okay. Matthew let out a shy sigh before nodding and biting his lower lip and crawling up onto the bed, dress grasping my clothes and sliding them off of my legs. He made me completely bare for him. As he tossed my clothes to the side, I settled back onto the bed and held out my arms to him. Mirror. Obediently, Matthew followed, kneeling between my legs, pressing his hands on both sides of my body, staring deep into his, my eyes and making me become lost in his gorgeous blue, gorgeous blue irises. I slowly danced my arms over his shoulders and felt his skin slightly heat up beneath my hand and making me slightly smirk up at my loving incubus. <clears throat> I'm all yours. I want you to take all of me. The carnal desire that flashed in his eyes made my body shudder even before his enthrallment began to settle into my body and completely encase my foreign desire. I don't deserve you. Our words became muffled, lost in the air as he pressed his lips hard against mine and quickly began to discard his jeans, joining me in my bare exposure and taking my scent as I relished feeling his skin against mine. Or what surprised me was him turning me over and wrapping his hands around my waist, hugging me back against his chest. I took the hint to grip onto the bedpost and arc my back for him, impatient. Then pleasure racked through me and I became a moaning mess in his arms. The bed rocked hard against the walls as I dug my nails into the wood and took in his love with our love making. My heart sung a, a riot of love as my coarse screamed songs of ecstasy of the no, Arias. Dang. I I took... Uh, what's that? Music appreciation. I should know this. This was indeed our last night in the demon world, so we could relish the feeling of magic and lust melting against us as we soared into the euphoria. Even as we angled ourselves to lock lips, we, our inhibitions became lost in the air. We became rough, rabid, and roared in the pleasure that rushed through us, quickly washing through our peaks once, twice, three times. We didn't care to count farther, losing our senses within our arms. As our ride eventually had to end, we settled onto the mattress, panting and gasping. The natural mask of our sweat danced in the air as we slowly cuddled together and relaxed in the sheets beneath our bodies. I was dizzy, swimming in oceans of joy and love within Matthew's arms, causing me to nuzzle my head beneath his and kiss over his Adam's apple. I'll always be here in your arms. And I'll be here in yours. I promise. Let's hope so. A sense of hope and courage wrapped around us that night, laced with our undying commitment for each other. We would survive. We would be okay. I felt safe in Matthew's arms, as I'm sure he felt safe in mine. We would return to the human world and be okay. Tomorrow would decide everything. The day of the siege had finally dawned. We had arrived at the Demon Lord's castle and we were as ready as we could be. Many armies bearing different banners and colors washed over the ground before the castle, ready to rush in and lay waste to the Demon Lord and the remainder of his forces. All of us shared a common enemy and, upon his demise, would finally know some form of peace. Even during the roll call of the Major Generals, the air became full of determination and pride. Mirth! Avarice! Nadia! Fiorna! The Radom! Each name called became a mark on history. This was a war to bring freedom or destruction to the demon world. If the Rebellion didn't win this fight, then this war would never end. If the Rebellion won, then the world would become united in a hopefully peaceful rule. The hour before the battle was set to take place, uh, my, my, my thoughts instantly ran back to our final meeting in Lilith Castle. Diana had pulled the leaders and us together, instructing us how exactly to proceed. Sarah, you will be joining Shadow and Sergeant in the front. 
taking care of the main army head on. I expect that you will come out of it alive. Yes, my lady. Rabbit, Fay, you are in charge of range attacks and defense. We cannot allow any of those blasted imps getting to us from behind. Yes, ma'am! As Diana looked to me, I grew silently fearful. I had to get into the Demon Lord's castle, but how exactly did Diana plan on getting me there? You and your fiancé will take the side route straight to the castle. Wait, huh? We've organized our army to have our strongest on the front lines and against the tree line, giving us a side route for you to make your way straight to the castle. If anything trickles into the side route, you'll be able to handle it. However, there is something I must ask of you. What is it? If you are indeed attacked, you need to defend your fiancé the entire way there. Do not let him use his energy. No way! When you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one -on -one with the Demon Lord. If something should happen to me, then I need you to take over. She is not ready to fight him, and you need to be at full strength to finish him off. She'll be fine. She has a way to defend herself. I stared, listening and reaffirming the order. I couldn't lie, I was nervous. However, I was determined enough to see this through. I looked over at my fiancé with a confident smile. I got this, don't worry. Despite the worried look on his eyes, he nodded and held my hand, trusting me and my decision to agree with Diana's command. Diana rolled her shoulders and looked at the map draped over the wall table, war table between us all. Her gaze pierced into the parchment as the aura around her body pulsated in anger. I will fly ahead and meet the Demon Lord head on. No matter what happens, I will not allow that monster to live. The pure determination and anger in her voice practically sent a shiver down my spine. She was set on seeing this through to the end and I was sure that she was willing to even die if it meant taking the Demon Lord with her. The remaining Incubi and the Wise were asked to stay behind the army and guard the main base where Rabbit and Faye were stationed. They were needed as many eyes as possible in the back of the battle, so the four couples were perfect to keep them things in check. As they agreed, the meeting ended and the mental preparation had begun. The idea of the upcoming battle scared me, sending waves of fear and worry up and down my body in response to the thought. Man, well, I'm nervous. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> Matthew wrapped an arm around my waist and turned my body to him, hugging me closely. Hey. Everything will be okay, all right? I listened to him speak before nodding, taking a deep breath, and taking in a deep breath. Everything would be okay. It would be fine. I had to believe in myself and get us to the castle when the time was right. Like a beacon, our forces became the banner of hope and strength for the rebellion. At the sight of Diana, many soldiers bowed or stared in awe and inspiration. May maybe it was her presence, or maybe it was for what she stood for, but as Diana stood at the cliffside of the mountain, the air became full of energy and power. My fiancé, Rabbit, Faye, and I stood behind her as Diana stood at the ledge of the cliffside, addressing the rebellion for their final battle. Her voice echoed across the field, blooming and reverberating through the air like thunder. Melites! Et hoc liberati esturei tramcun tuis omnibus conversiris! And what is she saying? She said that we're all fighting for freedom and that she'll lead us to it. Is that it? Pretty much. Everything else she's saying is just to rile everyone up for battle. He really does try to... Um... Word... Dang, I'm so forgetful today. Shelter. Shelter us from... I don't know, knowing what's going on. Because we all know what she really said. I nodded and I stared at the back of Diana's head. A part of me felt a little intimidated and jealous of the power she had. She really could make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. At the same time, I knew that what she... Was doing right thing. Was doing the right thing for this world. Ele dio don minati su nostri, nostri stret il mitere profundissimum inferni detractos. A pair of guards rushed forward, carrying a flailing imp demon who was caught in chains and forcefully slammed down in front of Diana. 
She glared down at him and gripped one of his horns, pulling him to his knees. You should be thankful we didn't throw you into a stew like we did your partner. Dang. Oh. <clears throat> With that whisper, Diana dragged her nails across the imp's neck, slicing open five large gashes in his throat and making him garble out a painful, pubbly cry. <sighs> oh my god. Diana, however, kept holding his head up, focusing on the blood that poured from him and guiding the energy that emanated from it towards the castle. With a flash, a large purple and red orb barrier that surrounded the castle shattered, fading into the air. The barrier that held the demon lord at bay was finally open, allowing us to cha charge in and end this once and for all. Diamond summoned her saber, letting it shine brilliantly as the purple taint over her skin began a twist and turn. Before my eyes, the taint on her back took shape, lifting off of Diana's skin and morphed into a set of demonic wings. I could only stare, jaw dropped as Diana's body lifted off of the ground and began to fly over the legions, slowly guiding towards the castle. To war! To battle! At her final command, Diana's wings pulsated in the air, flapping gracefully as she swooped down and forward. She was charging and flying for the castle walls, they were bared and ready to spill blood. As the armies below began to follow and march forward, Rabbit took hold of my shoulder and turned me away from the castle to face her. Come, we must hurry. Understanding the need for urgency, I nodded and rushed forward with the rest of the incubi toward the slope down the mountainside. Everything is in order. Sergeant Diana's guard are at the front lines, while Shadow is with his legion to the west. Are we good with our sneak attack plan? We've done what we can to keep your way clear. We'll try to make sure the battle won't break through the path. I nodded, feeling the need to gr rush nip at my heels, pushing me forward. My fiancé seemed to agree, gripping my hand and walking at my pace alongside me. However, we finally arrived at the forest line, Faye and Rabbit stopped looking back at us. Straight through here. The sound of the war will always be on your right, so do not get lost. You'll be fine though, just follow the tree line. In sync, my fiance and I nodded in acknowledgement before turning to see the other brothers and their wives. So, this is it. Remember your surroundings and protect each other. Be careful, alright? Make sure you stay safe. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there, and we'll return to the human world soon. Kick his dead body a couple times for me, all right? Right in the head. We'll be right here rooting for you and watching your back, okay? We'll win this. We know we can. You can do this. We'll see you soon, okay? I smiled despite the nerves running through my body. I held onto my fiancé's hand and gave it a hard sweet squeeze before receiving one back in kind. We'll finish this, then we'll go home. The group nodded before I slowly turned and looked to the tree line, took a breath and rushed forward. Matching my speed, my love followed, weaving through the trees behind me to not lose sight of me. The journey was surprisingly uneventful. The sound of the war boomed beside us outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the volume, but I shook my head and pressed forward, not wanting to become distracted. The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. As a line of incoming imps came into view, I glared and stopped, placing a hand over my chest and preparing to summon my guardian. Waves of energy pulsed around me before I jetted my hand out, forcing the familiar but lavender and white mist to shoot out of my hand and slam itself onto the ground ahead of me. I could hear my incubus jump back at the sound, surprised to see my summoning and staring in awe at the same time. Ah! Whoa, what the? However, I didn't care at that moment. All I could focus on were the imps and that I had successfully stopped and intimidated with my animal. Move out of my way! I jetted my hand forward, pointing at the imps while they were stunned from my animal's cry, and commanded my animal forward. Go! I rushed forward, causing my incubus to follow behind me as my animal continued to claw and bite through the imps in their path, and caring if they were attacking or frozen still from fear. The more imps that fell, the more reinforcements became shell-shocked. 
Some managed to drive their weapons into my animal, causing me to flinch and reel back a bit from the pain, but I pressed forward, knowing that I would be alright in the end. My animal pushed forward as well, animalistic in his carnage. The remaining imps began to quake and step back in fear, most likely never seeing a human use magic and slowly decimate their numbers. I didn't seem to mind that they became open targets for my animals, for my animal to strike down as we rushed onward towards the castle. My incubus, despite probably being surprised at my animal's carnage, followed as I continued forward, commanding my animal through every imp that came our way. I lost count of how many crossed us, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. By the time we reached the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead bodies behind us. I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of the lost energy echo through my body, as my animal began to slowly fade away. I watched my animal stare at me, its eyes asking if I had done well. I smiled and nodded slightly before it bowed its head and disappeared from sight, unable to maintain its form any longer without my energy to pull away. That was all I could do before my energy was expended and, I was wa and a wave of exhaustion rolled through my body. I began to fall forward, exhausted. My fiancé, however, quickly rushed forward and caught me in his arms. Whoa! Are you alright? Huh? I looked up to see Matthew staring down at me, fear and concern dancing in his eyes. We were safe for the moment, so I merely smiled up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you, like you protect me. Matthew let out a small laugh before pressing his forehead against mine. What would I ever do without you? I hugged him back, feeling relief that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, Matthew lifted me up and held me to my feet. Come on! You ready? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Let's go finish this! With that, Matthew and I rushed forward into the castle. The final battle had begun. We quickly rushed into the Demon Lord's castle, desperate to get inside and aid Diana in fighting the Demon Lord. After we rushed in, however, we stopped to see Diana and the Demon Lord standing off. Diana had her saber tightly gripped in one hand while she glared daggers into her opponent. The Demon Lord carried a large smirk on his face as he stood on the dais of his throne. As Matthew and I entered, his smirk grew about that much wider. Matthew, however, seemed to care more about the woman kneeling to the ground beside the demon lord with her hands on her knees, frowning at him. It's his mother! Mother! Ah! There he is! My son! Get him out of here now! What? I stared at Diana as she continued to face the demon lord. What was she talking about? The demon lord simply laughed and pointed at Matthew. Well, what are you waiting for? Claim your throne! What are you talking- At that moment, Matthew's body pulsed with a faint blue light. He curled over his body and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair. Matthew? Matthew, what's wrong? <sighs> Get him out of here! I rushed to Matthew, now terrified to what was happening. Before I could place my hand on his shoulders, however, Matthew vanished in a dissipating afterimage. Huh? <coughs> the sound of steel clashing caused me to turn to see Matthew and Diana clashing swords. Diana gritted her teeth as Matthew glared into her gaze. Damn it, fool! <coughs> I said, take your throne! Matthew's body pulsed again, forcing him to push against Diana and send her flying back to stand beside me. As Diana reached me, she moved a hand in front of me, blocking me from Matthew. Matthew! Matthew looked up at me and Diana, his expression twitching from trying to maintain control of himself. His eyes flickered between blue and gold as he gripped on his sword tight to his sword tightly. I wasn't afraid of him, so I stepped out from behind Diana and walked towards him, holding my hands out. Matthew, it's okay. You can, you can overcome this. S stay back. I ignored him and continued to walk forward, needing him to be okay. 
Whatever spell the demon lord had on him wasn't powerful enough to consume him. I needed to break its entire hold on him once and for all. Fight it, Matthew! You are strong enough to beat this! Matthew dropped his sword and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair and curling over himself. He scratched his nails over his horns, angry and aggravated. I don't want to hurt you! You won't, Matthew. I know you won't. At last, I stopped in front of Matthew's body. I gently tilted his head up and kept his face in both of my hands. His face was warm from the mental struggle and his eyes flickered between blue and gold. I trusted him, though. Matthew loved me and his love would crash through the spell. Let me help you. I quickly leaned in and kissed Matthew's head, making him gasp and freeze within my arms. I felt myself slowly drain of my remaining energy, but I didn't care. Matthew needed it more than me, and if I was able to free him, then I would. The air around us became lighter and easier to breathe, even as we separated. I stared into Matthew's eyes, seeing him stare wide at me in shock. They were completely painted in gold, causing my heart to tighten for a moment. Did he break it? Enough of this! Kill her! As the Demon Lord's voice reverberated in the air, a large sword embedded itself in the Demon Lord's stomach. <laughs> what the? Yay! Also, screenshot. Matthew looked back to his father, his hand extended out towards him as his eyes finally regained their ocean blue color. My heart began to jump in ecstatic joy. Matthew had broken free from the spell his father trapped him under. Thank God. How can this be? Impossible! You expected me to follow your orders, you sick bastard! I stared wide at as Matthew turned around and summoned a new de weapon into his fist. A large blue aura emanated from his body, flickering like flames as he stared at the demon lord down. You will never convince me to kill the ones that I love. Insolent brat! The demon lord gritted his teeth before sharply extending his hand over Matthew's mother. We could only watch as red ethereal chains shot out from the demon lord's back towards Azera, wrapping around her form and crushing her. Oh no! <laughs> Stop it! Your energy, woman! Faster than we could react, red lightning banned us around and shocked Azira's bound form. The red energy traveled through the chain, holding Harris hostage and into the demon lord's body, making him glow a terrifying blood color. A large sword formed in the demon lord's hand, arcing with red lightning. Matthew's first sword, which was impaled in the demon lord's stomach, crumbled into ash and fell to the floor, leaving a black scar mark. The Demon Lord's eyes, however, fixed themselves on Matthew's form with deadly intent. I'll kill you! Faster than I thought it imaginable, Matthew stepped forward and vanished, only to reappear in front of the Demon Lord and with his sword held high as Matthew slung his weapon down. However, the Demon Lord held out his hand and forced Matthew back with a burst of red energy. Matthew skidded backwards, crossing his sword over his body to shield himself from the blast. As the energy faded, the Demon Lord's lips curled into a crazed smirk. Then come, little boy! Show me what you can- Go on, Diana. Get him while he's down. I mean, distracted. The demon lord stopped staring at Matthew as his body froze. I hitched my breath. What was happening? Enough. Everyone turned their heads towards Matthew's mother, seeing her hold the chain that connected her and the demon lord in a tight grip. Her body was shaking, but the rage in her eyes- could make any demon fall to their knees. I will not let you hurt my son! Before the demon lord could turn and do something, a large bolt of blue energy shot through the chain and into the demon lord's back, causing him to arc back and scream in pain. Ah! 
Matthew grabbed onto me and covered me with his body as Diana blocked her face with her hands. The magic was so powerful the room began to shake violently. I watched from the cracks of Matthew's arms as dark black and red energy traveled down the chain from the demon lord into Desira's body, making her body pulse and grow in power. The demon lord, however, became weaker and surprisingly became much more frail. You are... my... I am not yours! Any longer! Another heavy blue bolt rushed through the chain and into the demon lord's body, causing a splash of blood to jet from the demon lord's mouth. Matthew finally stepped away from me and began to walk at the demon lord, forming a sword in his hand. As he did, the demon lord collapsed on the floor on his hands and knees and growled animalistically at his son. It's over. What surprised me was the smirk that graced the demon lord's bleeding lips and the chuckle that erupted from it. If he kills the demon lord, will his mother die as well? You are indeed the perfect son. That's really weird. Without another word, Matthew raised his sword and rammed it into the demon lord's neck, effectively pinning him to the ground and killing him. A bubbly cry of pain barely escaped the demon lord's mouth as his eyes glazed over. Dead. Better be dead. My heart felt major relief, shaking a bit as a weight lifted off of my soul. The demon lord was dead at last. I was free and we could go home now. Diana spat to the side, catching my attention. To think his own wife and son would be the ones to kill him. What have I been doing for the past ten years? I couldn't stop the amused smile on my face as Diana walked up beside me, rubbing her neck in irritation. You weaken him a bit for them, I'm sure. Diana rolled her eyes as Matthew finally rushed up to the dais towards his mother. Mother! His mother wrapped his arm, her arms around Matthew, squeezing him to her. Matthew hugged her back just as tightly and kind, joyous to see her freed from the demon lord's power. I'm right here. It's gonna be okay. I was beyond happy for Matthew. His mother was safe now and the demon lord was defeated. I could feel some sort of weight lift off of my shoulders, knowing that the curse had been broken with his death. I smiled as I watched Desire cry in Matthew's arms. I, before I could step forward to join them, however, Diana placed her hand in front of me, glaring ahead of her. I looked up at her with a very surprised face. Diana? Stay back. I listened to Diana? I nodded, unsure of why she wanted me to stay away. However, the intense expression on her face sent fearful chills down my spine as she scowled at Matthew and, her, and his mother. Was something seriously wrong? I turned my head back to the pair, watching and wondering what was going on. My sweet Sakeru, you're finally home. Of course I am. I had to save you, right? Azira smiled and kissed Matthew's forehead, slowly rising to her feet with him. As she fully stood, something in the air changed. The room became a little more peaceful and bright as Matthew turned towards me and Diana. I guess I can finally introduce you to my fiancé. She helped in saving you. Azira smiled very softly and looked to Diana, passing over me. Oh, ouch. What? I felt a little angry at being ignored, but I understood. She wouldn't expect a human to be his future wife. The princess of Lilith's kingdom is your intended? What? No, no, no. Not her. Before Matthew could step towards me, however, Azira's face delicately scrunched up at the sight of me. What the? Why is a human here? What did I ever do to you? Huh? Mom, that's my fiancé. The atmosphere suddenly changed again. The air became colder and something wasn't right. Something in Azira's eyes changed too, becoming hard and vicious. A human? Y yeah? Azira locked eyes with me and I suddenly gasped and became lost in my mind, detached from my body. I couldn't move anything or speak a single word and her eyes remained their icy blue color. What was happening? Human. Who are you? Oh. I'm no one. I'm an army.
army slot used for energy insects. What? Matthew stared at me, completely shocked at what I had said. However, whatever, however, I could only stare at Azira, whose gaze continued to burn into mine. You are not expecting to be with my son, correct? A human like me is not worthy. Dimitera Iyam. Instantly, my mind was my own once again, and I released a gasp of surprise. I collapsed into Diana's arms as she reached out to catch me. Azira looked to Diana, a fence clearly written across her features. How dare you! Matthew, get away from her! What is going on? I looked up and watched Azira glared at her own son and placed her hand on his chest. Her hand was engulfed in a dark blue glow that spread into the taint of Matthew's skin. Some sort of, invin of invisible force pulled Matthew back and slammed his body into the Demon Lord's throne. Oh. Ah! Matthew! As his body came to rest against it, blue chains wrapped around the throne and Matthew's body. The chains began to glow and tighten around him, locking him in place. Filthy human bitch! You don't belong in this world, and you will never have my son! <sighs> Mother, what are you- Your mother's not here anymore, Matthew. What? She's been connected to the Demon Lord for too long. She's gone mad. Oh, We're gonna have to kill his mom? No, I feel terrible. Mad? I am speaking truth! The king of the demon world has no need for a disgusting human! What? King of the demon world? I'm afraid you are mistaken. How am I mistaken? The demon lord is dead, so his son must take the throne! The demon lord is dead. The rebellion has usurped the throne. Your son no longer has claim to it. <laughs> the rebellion merely paved the way for the true king to ascend to the throne! My son was always destined to take it, and your little siege helped him achieve his fate! Mother, stop! Enough, Sekerdu! The chains around Matthew's body tightened, and he winced and choked out a gasp of pain. I instinctively reached out and tried to move towards him, but Diana held me back, protecting me still. Azera looked to me, to him with a sad expression, tears almost filling her eyes. When you left, I was so alone. I didn't understand. I always asked, why? Why did my own son leave me here? You broke my heart. But... Then I realized it was part of your destiny! Mother... You were merely preparing to take the throne! <laughs> you needed to experience the human world before returning and taking your rightful place when the time was right! That's why you joined the rebellion! No, no, that's not true! I came because the Demon Lord cursed! Listen to yourself! You are a demon, Zakadu! You are the son of the Demon Lord, destined for greatness! Why are you fighting this? Matthew pulled and struggled against the chains he was trapped under, no longer answering his mother. Azera, however, turned to me and Diana raged dancing within her eyes. You poisoned his mind. You enslaved my son! What? It wasn't true. I loved him and he loved me. This wasn't supposed to happen. Why was Matthew's mother doing this? Was she truly insane? Diana placed an arm on her sh on my shoulder, causing me to look up at her. Don't bother listening to her. Her mind has been consumed by madness. Like yours? And you, Princess of Lilith! You dare oppose this kingdom? You swore your allegiance to the heir of the Demon Lord! Yet you march here with an army bent on destroying the kingdom that you had pledged yourself to! The Demon Lord broke his promise and murdered my family while I was in the human world doing his dirty work! My vow changed accordingly, and I swore that I would see his kingdom fall. A whipped woman like you would never understand. Whipped? I merely waited for the chance to kill him so that my son could take his rightful place! Let's not forget that I was the one to strike the final blow on the bastard! I am warning you now. Stand down. The room became filled with a dark energy as Azera glared hard at Diana, her eyes glowing a deadly gold color. 
Laura Diana seemed to be unaffected by her gaze, returning the venomous look with a cold, red-eyed stare. Such arrogance! You truly think you can stand against me? If it means finishing the job and freeing the world from madness, then yes. Azera snarled before a blue aura enveloped her form. Her eyes began to flicker between her natural eye-colored gold as a room adopted an eerie chill. Then, allow me to clear the field of useless trash! What I didn't expect was Azera shooting a blue and black chain at me, a large blade jutting out at the end intent on running me through. Before I could scream, however, I was pushed back and fell onto the ground, the air in my lungs rushing and leaving me breathless. Ah! As I managed to look up, I saw Diana standing in front of me, wings splayed out wide behind her, twitching in furious rage. The chain in question had been knocked away and vanished into the air. I won't let you touch her! Has the human world tainted you too? You're defending a human! Yet you claim that I am the one who is mad! Stop it! Quiet! With a violent wave on her arm, Zara cast some sort of black mist over Matthew's mouth. As it took physical shape, a large blue steel mask in the shape of a bird's beak formed over Matthew's nose and mouth, completely covering the lower half of his face. This is for you, Sekedu. Let me finally give you the world you deserve! Azera looked back to Diana, rage fueling her glare and the cold golden color over her irises. I will warn you now. Queen of the Rebellion, you stand against a pure-blooded succubus. Do not think you have any advantage over me. In fact, I am stronger than you can ever hope to be! But... Diana is the... A true succubus, because her family descended from... Um... Don't remember the name. That person. Lilith. Another pure-blooded succubus? I knew Diana was, but I thought she was the only one. How could there have been another? <laughs> Diana's quiet chuckle, however, broke me from my thoughts. I recognize the strong scent of lilies. At least this fight will be interesting. Something in Diana's voice changed, shooting shivers down my spine. I recognized her tone of voice. The cruel Diana was back. However, Diana's hand reached back to me. What was she doing? Human, give me some of your energy. I don't need much to defeat this woman. Oh, come on! Give her your hand. Please let this be the right choice! I didn't want this to happen, but Diana needed to fight her. Azair had already enthralled me once, and I knew I was no match for her. I took Diana's hand, feeling her quickly drain some energy from my body. The taint around her form began to pulse and glow slightly in the new energy in her body, but Diana didn't hold on for long. Diana pulled back her hand and began to chant quietly, waving her hand in the air by her head. Enough talk! Die! At the sound of Azera's words, a volley of chains rushed up from behind her body and shot themselves towards Diana. Before they could reach her, however, Diana formed a familiar saber in her hand, parrying all of them and knocking them away from her. As they fell, the suddenly lifeless chains vanished into the ground, making Azera growl. You're too slow. All of those years under the Demon Lord's body must have taken a toll on you. You insolent bitch! Diana suddenly shot herself into the air and swooped towards the other succubus, raising her saber and swinging to decapitate Di Azera. However, all Diana hit was suddenly vanishing after damage. What? Before my eyes, Azera appeared behind Diana, floating in midair with the large chain ready to slam down on Diana's head. Diana! Diana quickly dodged to the side, knowing what my scream meant. However, the chain slammed itself onto Diana's left wing, causing her to dip and fall on the ground. Her body bounced off the marble surface and she landed on her stomach, knocking the wind out of her. Ah! A succubus relying on wings? A bit old fashioned. You really are from Lilith's bloodline to still depend on that method! Diana snarled and looked up at Zazera, gripping her injured wing. It looked broken, twitching in pain under Diana's fingers. However, the wing quickly reshaped itself and folded properly as if it had never been broken in the first place. 
Dana smirked as Azir stared in shock. It may be old fashioned, but I make it work. With the quick quip, that quick, that with that quip, Diana flew up Azira again, her wings flapping as she sailed through the air for an accelerated boost. <clears throat> Azira glared before dispelling her chain and flying at Diana in return, meeting her halfway. Both of the women began to brawl and swipe at each other in the air, exchanging kicks and punches in each other's blocking each other's strikes or dodging them. I, however, looked to Matthew. He was still struggling against the chains around him, pulling roughly one way than the other to try and find some leeway. His hands were bound to the armrest, leaving him no chance to use his power to summon anything. Um. 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 I don't know. I think uh, I've just been making mistake after mistake. And how would I even be able to rescue Matthew in the first place? I don't know. Matthew. I couldn't just lay there. I had to do something. I quickly jumped up and ran towards Matthew, leaning, needing to help him. However, a large barrier forced me back onto the floor. Was Azera holding me back? It wasn't fair! Matthew! <gasps> Diana and Azera finally shot away from each other, Diana landing near me and Azera landing beside Matthew. Enough fooling around! You'll never outmatch me! Just surrender! Growing like a proud bird won't convince me of your strength. If you claim to be stronger than me, then prove it! Once more, Diana charged at Azera, zipping through the air like a bullet. <laughs> From the shadows around Diana, lines of blue chains shot forth and breached for Diana's body. What? <laughs> the chains quickly wrapped themselves around Diana's arms, legs, and encircled her neck and waist, squeezing her tightly. A choked garble managed to escape Diana's throat as the chains began to pull her limbs in the opposite direction. My mind flashed back to the nightmare I had before I had arrived. Diana was chained in the air in the shape of a star, being pulled apart. However, this time it was Azira who was pulling the chains. Azira laughed hysterically as she took looked up at Diana's body, seeing the result of her sneak attack. <laughs> Such a shame, Princess of Lilith! Do you not like that? I thought you wanted me to prove my strength! <laughs> what a pitiful sight you are! Is that the best you can do, Princess of Lilith? Oh my god. With the snap of Azera's fingers, blue bolts of lightning ran through the chains and shot into Diana's swarm, causing her to release a heavily garbled scream into the air. Diana, no! I can't let you die again! I had to think of something quick. I need to save Matthew and Diana, but we're both possible, especially with a barrier in the way? My mind instantly thought of Sero. He had holy magic, so maybe he had the ability to break the barrier. However, what about Matthew? What if Azera did something else to him while Sero saved Diana? Then I remembered that I could summon Matthew to me using his real name. What if it helped him escape his bonds? There wasn't enough time to decide. I shouted at last, calling out the first name to come into my mind. Thero. Diana was in danger, and Matthew wasn't. I knew that his mother wouldn't hurt him, so I had to get Diana out of her predicament first. As Thero's name vibrated through my lips, a bright light flashed through the air, causing Azera to cover her eyes and making me and Matthew turn our heads. What? As quickly as it came, the light vanished, revealing Sarah holding Diana close to his body as she barely managed to stay afloat with her magic. The chains had been broken and were slowly fading away as Sarah glared intensely at Azira. She stared back in shock at who she, she saw. What is this? Sarah. The guard didn't reply, only to, intent on holding 
Thayanan doing something with his spear, which he grasped in a white knuckled grip. His body seemed to glow a white color that spread to gently engulf Diana's body in his hold. You dare lay your hands on my queen! Asera raised the spear up like a javelin. Asera stepped back in fear. The weapon began to emit a dangerous golden color in his grasp, the aura flickering through the air. Periat, Celesti Bestia! With a strong throw, Sero shot a spear at Azera and she protectively brought her arms in front of her and formed a blue barrier around her body. The spear's blade slammed into the barrier and continued to push against it, trying to reach its target. The barrier was cracking as the spear attempted to pierce through it, but the cracks would seal themselves together again as soon as they appeared. Azera struggled to keep it from piercing through the barrier around her. <laughs> Diana, barely hanging on to Sarah, guided them both back towards me, landing safely on the ground next to me before Diana almost collapsed. Is that you? Uh, I'm fine. However, Diana's eyes rolled into the back of her head and forward, she fell onto Sarah's arms. He tightened his hold on her, hugging her form to him as his eyes began to fill with panic. Diana was out for the count now. The sound of a heavy clatter echoed through the chamber as Sarah's spear was finally knocked away and fell to the ground, no longer glowing. Azera, however, seemed worn out from spending so much energy to defend against Sarah's weapon, and the barrier around her faded away. How? How does a demon have holy magic? I couldn't believe it. The spear was emitting holy magic? Then how was Azera able to block it and push it away? The light in Azera's eyes faded as she snarled at Sarah before she moved her hand in front of her body again and shot out a large blue orb wrapped in black chains towards him. It cut through the air like a bullet speed, slamming into Sarah and Diana's bodies before Sarah had the chance- Oh my god, I just killed them. Ah! They both flew backwards and slammed into the far wall, landing on the ground beside each other with a painful sounding pair of thuds. Sarah, Diana! I looked back at Azera, both furious and fearful of her. Azera then sneered at me, stepping down from the throne dais to walk slowly towards me. I felt my body freeze at her gaze. She was enthralling me again. I fought back with my willpower, trying to deny her any control over my form, but I remained as still as statue, only able to breathe. You waste of space! Do you really think you can just claim my son? He is about to serve a higher purpose and you are in his way! Don't you see that?! I gritted my teeth, fighting back harder. I could feel waves of energy rush through me and order me to obey her mental commands, but I refused to acknowledge, acknowledge them. I wasn't going to give in to her. All you are good for is being chained to a bed and milked of your energy like a good little harem girl. So much more energy would be able to sustain him for decades! Hmm. I stared wide at her, feeling her energy surge in my body and seeing her smirk grow with each step she took towards me. Her eyes were glistening with sadistic rage. Maybe that's what we'll do with you! You can be my son's favorite plaything! He'll always have a source of energy and will become powerful enough to completely rule over this world with an iron fist! Well, you get to live. Would you like that? No. My mind began to flash back to the nightmare I had of Matthew staring at me with a cold sadistic gaze and smile. I had to fight myself from shuddering as I battled against Azera's hold. Matthew will never listen to you. Won't he? I've been draining him of his willpower this whole time! He won't be able to disobey me anymore. My heart stopped as I could feel Azera's hold take over as my, over as my spike of fear lowered my resolve. She was doing what? My eyes darted over to the storm, terror clutching at my heart. He was going to obey her? I looked to Matthew to see the chains disappear from his body as he slowly stood his, stood his head down with his bangs shielding his eyes. I became whited as he slowly descended to the dais and began to walk towards his mother in a zombie-like fashion. Well, bad end. Azera looked over her shoulder at her son as she chuckled before turning back to me. Now, be a good boy and chain this- <laughs> My voice caught in my throat as I witnessed a blade ramming through Azira's chest, making her gasp and treble in shock. From behind her, Matthew lifted his head to reveal his tear-stained eyes. 
As he held onto the blade that he had impaled his mother on with a shaky grip, Zara turned her head to try and look at him. Matthew. What? What? I'm sorry, but I love her. My heart swelled in both love but despair. This wasn't fair to him. But it was between her or me, and Matthew made his choice. Sakedu! Goodbye, mother. No! I knew this was coming, but still. Without another word, Matthew pulled the blade out of Azera's body and swung it around his head, cutting a large gash into her back and forcing her down to the ground. My body became my own again as I crawled back from her falling body. Azera hit the ground and quickly went lip lifeless at last. Matthew, however, gripped to his blade and stared at what he had done both in pain and in shame. My heart began to cry for Matthew. He had struck down his own mother, one who loved him, one whom he loved with every part of his being. This undoubtedly impacted him hard, and I could never know what ran through his mind. I slowly stood and walked over, standing before Matthew as he dropped his blade and averted his gaze to the side. <laughs> I'm sorry. Matthew. I slowly raised my arms to offer a hug, and instantly Matthew pulled me to him and pressed his body against his, burying his face into my shoulder. I could tell he was fighting back tears, but I couldn't stop himself from letting some go. Pressing his forehead against my neck, all I could do was hold him and hug him with the same amount of force. It's over now. It's over. I gently ran my fingers through Matthew's hair, trying to calm him down. Eventually, he let his sadness out, making us both collapse on the floor on our knees, gripping to each other tightly. His fingers dug into my shirt, pressing me even harder against his chest as he whipped against my shoulder. I, however, was silent, trying to take everything in. The demon lord was dead, and so was Matthew's mother. The war had essentially been won. As a soft wrestle caught me and Matthew's off guard, we turned to see Sarah and Diana leaning against the far wall, slowly rising and leaning on each other to remain on their feet. Well, that was interesting to say the least. More like heartbreaking. Matthew didn't speak a word as he looked away from Diana. Sarah guided Diana over with a protective arm around her waist as she looked down at us. Matthew, I'm sorry for what you had to do. I know. However, you saved the woman you loved. Matthew slowly turned to look me in the eyes as did I, and as I did him. His face was stricken with tears, but his expression became one of slow acceptance. She has been your rock ever since you met her. If you had let your mother control you, I would have killed both you and her. As harsh as her words were, I could understand why she said them. Matthew and I stared into each other's eyes as we took in what Diana said. She was right. I loved him and I was happy to have him alive and in my arms. That was all that mattered. I smiled and took his head into my hands, leaning in and pressing my forehead against his. We're alive and we can go home now. Matthew grinned and nodded, cupping my head in his hands as well. Yeah, we can go home now. A loving laugh bounced between us as we finally let everything sink in. We were together, alive, and in love. We had won and we were going to return to the human world and be together for the rest of our lives. Ugh. I barely noticed the gacking noise Diana made behind us. Hey, you have Saro. Don't be complaining. Saro, take me away from this. I'm feeling nauseous just looking at them. <laughs> Sarah, however, chuckled and guided Diana out of the room, waving his hand over the air before exiting completely. As I looked around the room, around the room became vacant of any damage or death. There were no bodies or any trace of blood. 
Matthew and I were alone to hold each other and wait until the horn sounded for the war to be officially over. Matthew gently pulled me close and rested his head on his chest, rested my head on his chest, resting his chin on the top of my hair. I love you. I couldn't fight the smile that painted itself over my cheeks as I knelt close to Matthew, relaxing at last. I love you too. It was over. The war was finally over. As the smoke cleared, we were victorious. The soldiers left standing were the ones to cheer in victory. The sky became littered with the howls and cries of the joyful and happy. The tyranny of the demon lord had ended. But what now? Home was now possible. We could go back to the human realm and we could live our lives as we wanted. It was something I desperately wanted and yet my body was not ready to make the journey just yet. We had to celebrate the success of the war after all. As the full moon rose over Lilith Castle towards the dawn, the entirety of the demon world celebrated the endless drink and food, laughter and dancing. It was so unreal, but the courtyard that I could see was filled with smiles and happy faces. We had stayed for one more night, traveling back to Lilith Castle to rest and return home as healthy as we could be. After all, we had just gone through war. One more night in the demon world wasn't going to hurt us. While the majority of the rebellion danced in the courtyard, I remained with the incubi and the rebel leaders who were all in the royal hall, having their own celebration. Drinks were shared and battle stories were exchanged, making some laugh and others roll their eyes. I found myself intrigued with the stories Sergeant told about at the front line. As I looked to Diana, however, she simply kept quiet with a small smile on her face. She looked at the Incubi and the rebel leaders in silence before walking away from the little party we had. As if she knew I was staring at her, Diana looked over at me and slightly gestured with her head to follow her. We're gonna go get those flowers. I followed, curious as to where she was going. I was sure I made sure to remain quiet as I separated from the rest of the journey and followed her out of the room onto the hall. The entire journey, Diana didn't speak a word. Even Sarah didn't follow her, most likely being told that she wanted to speak to me alone. Diana led me through the castle, up a couple of set of stairs, and into what looked like a, to be a royal bedroom with a balcony. Was this a guest room? It was untouched and I could smell the very faint scent of dust. What did she bring me here? Diana stepped into the room, using her magic to ignite the candelabras and the air out the room by opening the balcony window. Before I could ask however, Diana finally spoke up. I have to thank you, dear. For what? For aiding us in this war. We've been fighting the Demon Lord for so long, we thought the war would never end. As terrible as the circumstance was, if you hadn't been summoned here, we probably would have still been fighting now. Diana walked to the balcony and leaned against the railing, staring into the dark night sky. The light from the room illuminated her form as she gazed at the stars. Despite the situation about around us, the air seemed calm with the faint echo of the celebrations whispering through the night. I walked over and stood beside her, leaning against the balcony, and looked at Diana as she smiled and let out a chuckle. To be very honest, I didn't expect to ever see you again. After I took your energy that night, I vowed to never deal with humans again. No clairvoyance could have told me about you coming into play in this war. I wasn't exactly counting on coming here. But at least I gotta help you bring peace here. Diana smiled, nodding to me. I really was glad to help bring peace to a world. It wasn't out of pride or vanity. It was a matter of helping people clearly in need. We owe you much thanks. I will accept your thanks when I finally get married. Oh, I had almost forgotten. I tilted my head at her. What was she talking about? Diana lifted one of her hands towards the sky and waved her hands through the air, making a soft purple mist glow around her fingers. Within seconds, the mist morphed and formed itself into a lavender-colored lily. Resting peacefully between Diana's fingers, she brought it down and presented it to me with a kind gaze. A gift, my dear. A gift? I slightly took, I slowly took the flower out of Diana's hands and inspected it visually. It was light, but I could feel a soft glow of magic emanating from the stem and petals. The bloom reminded me of a human world lily. But something about it seemed otherworldly. A flower known only to demons of Lilith. We call it the Flower of Lilith. 
because these flowers were said to have been created when Lilith first appeared in the Abyssal Plains. I stared at Diana, not understanding why she was giving me such a gift. She chuckled at my confusion and leaned against the railing, continuing her explanation. It is also a flower we succubi use when we marry. Use? What do you mean? Diana chuckled again before she gently took the flower from my hand and tucked it behind my ear. As it settled against my ear, I felt mist circle in my head and form into a flower crown of lavender lizzie, lilies. The way Diana looked at me made me feel like I was in my bridal wear already. A human you may be, but Lilith would have been proud to see you marrying one of her own. These flowers represent her blessing, and may only crown the worthy. I felt a blush run across my cheeks. This was a blessing? I slowly reached up and ran my fingers along the flower crown adorning my head, feeling the soft petals against my fingertips. They were almost pulsing with energy. I felt both flattered and uh, honored that a simple flower felt that I was worthy enough to crown my head. Diana let out a sigh and looked back to the sky, making me do the same. One would have expected the sky to be full of smoke or smell of a war's aftermath, but the sky was clear and fresh air drifted through my nose as I inhaled. It was indeed another world and tonight was my last night in it. Well, you did it! Congratulations! You've made it to the end of your story! I have to say, I am very surprised at how it turned out. So am I. Man, so many emotions. In the span of three hours. And just the ending to fi uh, uh, finish up, and then uh, Matthew's thing will be over. And then it'll be Diana, if I if I'm able to get to it. If while I'm away in Mexico, since I'm basically leaving uh, tonight, I'm gonna try to get these out before I leave. Um, but I'll, if not, I'll try to get them out once I'm in the airport waiting for my flight or something. Hopefully, I'll be able to cut this down. But anyways, I'm. Just Prolonging this. Let's get back to this. I don't have to talk anymore. I would just let Kay talk for now. Nevertheless, I'm glad things worked out in the end, whether it was for the better or otherwise. I never imagined that Matthew's own mother would go crazy and turn on him. At least the Demon Lord got what he had coming to him. Anyway, Matthew's completely free now, and you got to return to the human world in the end. Anyways, you've been through a lot, so why don't we skip to... Huh? You want to know what happened after the war? Well, I mean, I, I guess I could tell you. After the war was finished, the entire rebellion celebrated. Words spread far and wide about the rebellion's success, and soon every kingdom in the Abyssal Plains had become united with the new authority. You would think demons would be more hostile towards each other, being demons and all, but the threat of the Demon Lord was what brought the entire world together. The entire world united under one banner, the Lilith Crest. Diana became the sovereign of the entire plane, accepted and loved by practically everyone because of her devotion to the world and her bravery in the war. Saro, as devoted as ever, remained by her side as her loyal bodyguard. Diana became one of the most beloved rulers in all of Demon World history. Her natural heart of gold led her to lead the world to a prosperous future, one filled with peace and happiness. The other rebel leaders supported her, eventually changing the caste system of the world and slowly working their way towards a plane as equal and peaceful as it could be. Yay, Rabbit gets what she wants. Diana had her suspicions, of course, as any monarch would, but if they had any sort of bad thoughts about her before, they certainly didn't during the recreation of the world. And I believe that is everything that happened after... well, except for your story, anyway. Matthew and you went back to the human world and had a peaceful night in your bed before moving on and getting married! Huh? Uh, how do I know? <laughs> well... I have my ways. 
Maybe you should check it out. The wedding day, which was rescheduled without issue, became as perfect as they imagined it to be. The ceremony was perfect, and the reception was filled with food, cakes, streamers, and everything a perfect party should have. Our night became filled with both excitement and fun dancing, and a feeling of perfection as the realization of everything hit me. I was at last married to the man of my dreams. I could go on and on about the wedding and the honeymoon, but after, honestly, after the war, I was more concerned of living my life afterwards. Our lives exploded with possibilities after we officially became husband and wife. Matthew helped escalate the Anderson Toy Company to new heights with his brother and became a head designer for toys. He began to pump out idea after idea, becoming a master toy maker like my grandfather was. As for me, I began to go through my own success in life dedicating myself to becoming exactly what I wanted to be. After all, my husband was being a master toy designer. If I put the same amount of work in as I did in the human demon world, then I was going to be okay. However, there was never a day that went by that I didn't think about what was happening in the Abyssal Plains. It was a heavy, cha heavy, chapter, heavy chapter in my life, one that tested the love between me and Matthew. The memories of her final fight with the demon lord and Azeo still haunted me slightly, but it only showed how passionate Matthew was within keeping me safe from remaining as my own. I was blessed, I was blessed to have him as mine after everything was, everything we went through. I'm tired, guys. Sorry if I just keep slurring my words. Still, I was confident that we would go through and stay together no matter what came our way. Demon, devil, whatever, it didn't matter to us. We were unstoppable together. A moment to myself was all it took to remember everything that we went on during my time in the Abyssal Plains. It was a heavy part of my life and chapter I would never forget for as long as I lived. Still, there were some fun moments while others only proved to be me how strong I was and how strong the love me and Matthew had was. It was a blessing in disguise. I sat at the dining room table, looking over the multiple photos that were taken from our wedding. There were so many goofy smiles, embraces, and tear-jerking moments that spanned through every picture. I felt myself grinning at the sight of each, other, each one, remembering vividly each moment as it was shot and captured in nostalgic euphoria. I almost wanted to go back in time and relive it all over again, just to feel the emotions run through me once again the first time through. What do you think, Simon? I looked to my furry friend, pointing an image that managed to catch him jumping for the bridal garter in his surprisingly human form. How he managed to learn that, I would never know, but I was excited to have him have had him as a guest instead of just my lucky charm. That's cute. Simon wobbled over from his spot, looking at the image, and gave me a silly grin. It still looked a little evil, but I had begun to recognize which of his smiles were actually filled with ill intent and which were genuine. I giggled and slid it over to him, picking it up for off the table and handing it to him as, and watching him sit back on, its, on his fluffy tail, looking at it in awe. I guess its picture was still a wonder to Simon since they didn't move. Shaking my head, I began to slowly pile the rest of the images together, eager to store them away for the feature and frame some up just for the sake of the memories. As I did, Matthew walked into the room, hands behind his back with a smile. Oh, hey, Matthew. Hey, what you doing? Oh, I was looking at her wedding photos. I got a bit nostalgic, you know? Matthew nodded and walked over, looking over them over my shoulder. I, however, attempted to be sly and look over his and in return to try and glimpse at what he might have been hiding behind his back. To my surprise, there was nothing there, making Matthew smirk and laugh. <laughs> Look, I know I have a nice butt, but you don't need to try and sneak a peek at it, okay? Wow. Oh my god, Matthew. I gave Matthew a playful slap on the shoulder as both of us began to laugh wildly at the joke. Matthew was the first to calm down, wrapping an arm around my shoulder and continued to look at the pictures. <laughs> Man, it's been like, what, a couple months since the wedding? 
right? Yeah, how time flies. I laid my head on Matthew's shoulder, letting my emotions drift into a state of calm and serenity in his half-embrace. With a chuckle, Matthew lowered his head and kissed the top of my hair before nuzzling it with his cheek. I still remember it. Oh, I was so nervous saying my vows. Me too. It was like a dream from long ago. Both of us reveled in the memory of us exchanging vows and saying I do to one another. I could feel a rush of happy realization wash over me as I affirmed to myself. Matthew was my husband. Matthew grinned before kissing my temple and standing up straight, placing his hand behind his back once again. When he brought them forward, I was shocked to see him bring around a gift box, beautifully wrapped and tied with a bow. Huh? M Matthew, what is this? Something that I think you and Simon will like. Is it a new Simon? A Simon perked up at the sound of his name as I straightened up his up in my chair, now beyond curious of what was in the box. As Matthew slowly unwrapped it, I gasped at what popped out of it. Another doll? I want to see! Oh my god, it's so cute! Look at it! She's so cute! Bursting from the now open top was a fluffy doll that looked almost like Simon but with a bow on its head and a cute curl on its fur. It looked around and hopped onto the table, skittering over to Simon. Of course, Simon brandished his toy knife, but stopped as the doll came up close and sniffed at him, gen grinning at him and hopping around at him excitedly. A couple of sniffs from Simon caused him to do the same to his new friend. Can't stop looking at her, she's so cute! I figured, since we're married and stuff, maybe it was time to get Simon a playmate of his own. You know? That makes him stay out of trouble, hopefully. I smiled as the two furry dolls bounced around each other, now excited for their new company, and stood, walking over to Matthew. He lowered the box and wrapped his arms around me, grinning down at me as I nuzzled my nose to his. You are the absolute best, you know that? <laughs> I do my best for you. Matthew raised his hand and brushed a strand of hair behind my ear before cupping my cheek. I felt his warmth radiate from his hand, causing me to lean in and smile. I love you, Matthew. I love you so, so much. I love you too, more than anything. And I'll always be here with you, working to keep a smile on your face. I couldn't stop my smile from growing before leaning in and kissing Matthew lovingly. Feeling him kiss back with the same amount of love and passion I had. He would always be here with me and no one would be able to take him away. I would be here, arms open wide for him and I would fill him with my love for as long as I lived. And that was my perfectly happily ever after. And my love for you was endless. Eee, let me go write this down. I will have paper this time. We're done with Matthew's route, even though I had to basically one-shot it. Um, but this will be broken down into parts. And, well, I think, or maybe I'm just going to keep it as <laughs> three parts. The first one that's already uploaded, which is part one. Part two being the one before I took a break, and this being part three. Yeah, that sounds about good enough for me. Uh, so that concludes Matthew's route. It was good. It was sad. I feel awful for Matthew. Having to basically uh, kill his mom. Because she went mad. And everything is right with the world. And then we will now be moving on to Diana's route. Or maybe doing the alternate. Uh, mm, 
Yeah, I'll probably just do the alternates. But, I don't know. We shall see whatever it is that I get to doing it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, as I said before, I will not... I I'll probably won't be able to upload uh, for the next three weeks. Maybe I might be able to, but it's highly unlikely. But if, if I do, then... You will see me then. If not, I guess August 8th would probably be the next time I would upload. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!